trust. In today's world, it seems to be a scarce resource and worth more than gold. What level of trust do you have in your community? How much do you trust your neighbors, your government, your law enforcement agencies? Do you trust the news you see, hear, or read? When you hear the term video surveillance, do you think Big Brother or do you think increased safety and security? Hello and welcome to another episode of Preview of Tomorrow. I am your host, Mike Lake. In today's preview, we will explore the surprising ironies of trust in our communities by understanding the role artificial intelligence can play in increasing our trust and security through monitoring surveillance systems. We will meet Uday Karen Shaka and learn about the shortcomings of our current system and the solution his company, Smart Century AI, has developed to restore trust in our communities through improving the efficiency and privacy of the surveillance systems of tomorrow. Innovation, resiliency, discovery. Join Mike Lake, President and CEO of Leading Cities, as we explore the technologies shaping the possibilities of our future with a preview of tomorrow. Well, hello and welcome, Uday. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and another welcome to our listeners. I, I'd like to introduce you all to Uday Karen Shaka, the CEO and founder of Smart Century AI the first company to use artificial intelligence to drastically reduce the number of false alarms in surveillance systems. Now, before we really get started here, I'd like to take a step back here, Uday, and, and get to know you a little bit more. How, do you, how did you become so involved with surveillance systems, and what motivates you to keep improving them? Yeah, it started with a personal, uh, you know, um, incident uh, that deeply affected me. Um, so, uh, so uh, as, as you rightly introduced, so I'm Uday Kiran Shak. I'm the founder and CEO of the Century AI. Uh, so, I've been interested in computer vision and applications of AI for a long time. And uh, w there was actually a garage break-in, and we lost a bunch of stuff. And I was pretty upset. <laughs> I went to the police and asked them, like, "Hey, how could this happen?" In uh, you know. In in Silicon Valley, you know, where I'm living and uh, surrounded by technology, computers, everything, and cameras, security cameras. Uh, the answer was what uh, totally provoked this uh, idea, right? So he said, hey, all the cameras exist. You know, they're all security providers, but nobody has time to watch them. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, that's right. You know, yeah, who's going to sit and keep watching their own cameras, right? <laughs> so I said, yes, that's exactly the problem that AI is supposed to solve, you know. Uh, you need to let the AI look for the anomalous behaviors, you know, unusual, you know, occurrences, and bring it to the right attention of the people. So whether it is the homeowner, the business owner, uh, it could be a security provider, or it could be law enforcement, they need to be pulled in only when something strange is happening. So that was the light bulb moment for me, and uh, uh, immediately I said, "Hey, this is solvable. You know, I can do it." And what was really interesting was a police officer said, hey, if you're going to solve it like that, I've never heard anyone <laughs> give me such a good uh, you know, uh, idea of how to solve. I would like to be the first investor. So <laughs> that's how basically the company took off. And um, so here we are, like, you know, uh, a few years later, you know, uh, doing a wonderful job of providing um, AI powered uh, security and safety solutions to the communities uh, worldwide. So, well, first of all, this is in, this is not your first uh, company. Um, <laughs> you you've done this before, have you not? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, I've done many startups. I've advised startups, invested in startups, and co-founded them. And so Sentry was uh, really where everything kind of came together. So all mm -hmm. my experience, you know, working with startups, and then a really uh, problem that really impacted me. Uh, you know, uh, and I found a wonderful team that actually shared this uh, vision of creating a safer and secure communities. And um, so that all kind of came together, uh, you know, and as I said, like an endorsement by a law enforcement official who is responsible for our <laughs> security and safety was actually a big, uh, you know, uh, motivator for me to take this on full time and really, you know, uh, bring it to fruition. So, yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of experience in entrepreneurship and technology and business as well. So just a big, quick background. 
So I have an undergrad in um, uh, technology, and uh, I worked as a software engineer, project manager, and then uh, I did my MBA from Duke University. Uh, so became a management consultant, acquired a lot of business background, and then invested in all these startups. And then everything basically came together when we started Century. <laughs> well, congratulations on that. And you know, already you've mentioned a few times the word community. Um, now, certainly, leading cities believes deeply in the power and importance of community. And it will come of no surprise to you that uh, community is really built on relationships. The foundation of any good relationship, of course, involves trust. So when we think about surveillance, there is obviously this, you know, this tendency for some of us to really be concerned, and with good reason, uh, about the ethics behind it and, and you know, being watched all the time. Um, and so I, I want to dive a little deeper into this and 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 ask uh, your opinion on on building trust in community uh, with surveillance. Yeah, so I actually thought thought deeply about this problem. Okay, so here is crime happening, and we have these uh, you know pretty deep divisions in the society. You look at like you know uh, Black Lives Matter movement, you know uh, Make America Great Again, QA and on. Like uh, uh, what I see is kind of uh, a loss of trust with whatever we have today, right? So we have you know police officers, we have security cameras, uh, you know, or basically with whatever we have, we seem to have a problem. So the question is, how can you improve the trust in the community? And this is where I sincerely believe technology is the answer. There is a nuanced approach to solving this problem. It's not throwing more bodies at it. And that's that's a, probably a big mistake a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, other communities are doing. Um, so when you think about the problem, uh, the occurrence of like violence or you know um, or something unusual like even theft or crime um, is uh, kind of rare, right? So we are in a generally safer environment, but when it happens, it affects people for the whole life, right? Um, so now your problem is to look for a rare event and uh, you have to look at it 24 by seven by 365. So that is where the human capacity breaks down. You know, uh, How can you keep an eye on your home, your surroundings, your loved ones um, all the time, but without, you know, um, having a strange person watching them, right? Uh, whether it is a uh, monitoring center agents, whether it's security guard or police officer, would you have them watch you regularly or would you have a technology that is proven to be agnostic and you know independent and will respect your privacy? You know, would you rather have that do this job? So that is the question I kind of pose uh, to myself. And then I asked other people and they absolutely loved it. They said, yes, that makes sense. You know, uh, I mean, do I want, uh, you are familiar with the TSA problem, right? Uh, as you're passing through, there was a guy looking at how exactly you look like. And people are, you know, howling, you're like, hey, how can you see me almost nearly naked, right? So so there is this problem of uh, in your, when you have a person watch you, right? So uh, we all bring our own biases, you know? Uh, you like a yeah. tall person, short person, different races, you know? Uh, so when you ask someone else to monitor, you know, there are inherent biases that people bring to the table. Now, if you condition an AI to be very strictly, you know, unbiased and will respect the privacy, it will forget what it has seen until unless there was something strange, something unusual. You see like a big group of people, you see guns coming out, you see fire, you see a person fallen down. Until unless something like that happens, you know, I don't want you to save anything, store anything and, you know, call uh, for an alarm and don't see, you know, me eating a sandwich or a burger, right? So you have no business of doing that, okay? You have no business of right. knowing how I look like, right? So until unless you see me doing something different, something strange. So that is the line I think I would draw. I would basically say, hey, a technology which is severely limited in what it is supposed to do is far, far superior to everything that you have today. So, you know, it seems to me that this issue is is wrapped up in a, in a lot of uh, ironies. Um, so there is that fear of, of of being watched and knowing now that smart smarter technology, AI technology can can alleviate that. Um, but there's also an issue 
and so that would be mistrust of the system, you know. Um, but there's also this issue of false trust. Um, so when I think of the the millions of of uh, security guards, I think 20 million security guards worldwide, who are sitting there, yeah. you know, for six or more hour shifts, uh, watching 10 to 15 video cameras constantly. <laughs> Um, yeah. the, the overwhelming majority of the time they they are not watching something bad happening and therefore they become yeah. to begin to trust that nothing's happening, uh, and become a little bit more lax. And so the, the actual security and safety uh, <laughs> of the system that the system is supposed to be providing is actually broken down. It, whereas, Tell me, I mean, does that is that really true? Am I, am I understanding that challenge enough or properly? Absolutely. So we have a classic situation where a construction company actually set up security cameras and they were streaming it to a monitoring center. And guess what? They come in the morning and they find their whole, you know, a shipping container full of their computers, you know, devices, you know, laptops. Uh, the charts, the project plans, uh, you know, valuable equipment, all gone. And they were surprised, like, how did this happen? You know, it was supposed to be under 25 by 7 uh, surveillance. You know, you know about Jeffrey Epstein, who died in a high security prison where he's watched by two security guards all the time. Um, all these happen primarily because we are not capable of keeping our attention on something that occurs very, very rarely. And that has been proven time and again that, uh, you know, it is not a job suitable for people. Uh, on the contrary, if you show them something very unusual and tell them, hey, can you tell me this is, uh, you know, uh, something that uh, requires attention or not? Um, now, you know, because it's not a monotonous or uh, very um, uh, basically, um, it's, it's, it's like leaves moving or like spiders crawling or, you know, so they actually pay attention. They say, oh, yes. Uh, this is something that uh, you need to do something about. And here's the other important thing. Can you learn from it, right? Um, uh, so if there is a way you can train the system to say, hey, okay, I see this, uh, you know, a lot of people trust funnily, uh, but then, hey, this is October 30th, you know, it's Halloween. So it's, it's okay, right? So <laughs> you can always train the system, you know, to not alert you, you know, at wrong times, but then alert you for sure when it sees if it's missing something. I, I, you absolutely hit the right point. Um, it, it, like throwing more bodies and making them watch more and more security cameras is not going to solve the problem because it is fundamentally, um, you know, <laughs> different from what uh, we humans have evolved to become, right? We look for mm -hmm. unusual events. We cannot pay attention to the same, you know, thing for hours right. and hours, you know, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, so tell me, you've touched upon it a bit, but exactly how does Smart Sentry AI work? Yeah. So um, we start fundamentally by looking for unusual activity. So are there people in a restricted area? Are there people in a place where they're not supposed to be? Like for example, a public parks after they're supposed to be closed. So when you look for that unusual event to begin with, and then you layer on information, right? Uh, okay, uh, is a person spending too much time there? Is the person loitering there? Or is there a group of people forming? Do they seem to be carrying weapons? Or uh, is uh, someone fallen down? Uh, is there something unusual about this uh, that needs attention by uh, you know, a security professional uh, who can then quickly determine whether this needs attention? We think that is how we are building our solution. First, uh, we look for intrusion detection by people or vehicles. You know, is there something unusual about that? Then we look for, okay, now that you found a person or a vehicle, is this a person who is known? For example, if it's a, a business owner or, you know, who is hanging out near the business, then it's totally fine. If it's a staff member near the business, fine. But if you see someone else, you know, uh, or if it's not a security person, but is uh, you know, present in a restricted area, um, you want to call attention. And then you go into the safety layer where you see uh, anything and everything that's strange. And for example, during the COVID situation, if you told the system, hey, if you see people who are not maintaining social distancing or if they're not wearing masks, you know, can you alert? And the system will definitely do it for you, right? So, mm -hmm. so those are the ways we are thinking about it. Can I first detect, you know, if there is a person or a vehicle in an unusual place? 
um, then can I tell whether this person is authorized to be there or not? And then finally, is this person behaving erratically or unusually that causes concern? So it's that layers. So don't tell me anything about a person until unless I see something unusual happening. So that is the very crucial difference between watching 24 by 7 and only watching when something is unusual. So instead of 99% of uh, motion alerts being, uh, you know, false alerts, uh, you're looking at 99% being something worth looking at, something yeah, where exactly. it's unusual. unusual. It's fascinating. So, listen, we have just about a, another 30 seconds or so left, but tell me, what, what does the world look like 10, 20, 30, whatever years from now, where smarter surveillance is in place? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, I'm uh, biased towards this uh, utopian version of uh, everyone, you know, should be able to trust their, you know, community members. You see any person, you know, this person means, you know, something good. You know, they're not a criminal element. Um, they're not uh, lurking around to, you know, pounce on you. So you feel very comfortable, happy. In fact, you don't wear any IDs. Uh, you don't need to introduce yourself like you are known to a potential business, potential, you know, a school, library, public building. Uh, you are a known entity. You engender trust. The moment you're walking in, the system has already certified that you are a nice person. So you can walk in anywhere. You can meet anyone. And, you know, you will feel that your property is always safe. Your loved ones are safe. Um, I think uh, you can truly believe the system is actually serving you and not the other way around. So that's the vision we have at Century AI. Well, Uday, this has been enlightening, and uh, I want to thank you for your time and for sharing your insights and uh, the incredible work that you are doing to, to build safer, more secure, and, and ultimately more trusted communities for all of us. Thank you very much. Absolutely. <laughs> now, just tell me, for you. anybody who's interested in learning more, how can they connect with uh, Smart Century AI? Yeah, the easiest way is go to Google and say Sentry AI. You will land on our website and you can uh, immediately reach out to me. Uh, it's uday at smartsentry.ai or hello at smartsentry.ai. And, you know, we will be happy to talk to you. Wonderful. Well, thank you again for the work that you're doing and improving our communities. We look forward to seeing your success in the future. Have a great day. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Mike. And thank you for tuning in to this episode of Preview of Tomorrow. Listeners like you are essential to advancing our efforts to drive resiliency and sustainability for all. I ask that you give us a rating on Apple Podcasts or whichever streaming platform you prefer. Your feedback helps us to grow and share these brief previews of what life in the future can be. In addition to thanking our guests today, I want to thank Peter Roy and Demetria Bridges for making this podcast possible. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and encourage others to also join us each week in previewing the possibilities of tomorrow. Preview of Tomorrow is brought to you by Leading Cities, a global nonprofit driving resilience and sustainability for all by unleashing the potential of the world's cities. Join them at leadingcities.org.